Welcome to the Tea with the Masters podcast, featuring three of the world's leading martial arts experts, the warrior, world-breaking champion, holder of multiple world records, professional teacher, mentor, and World Martial Arts Congress representative for the Republic of Ireland, Dai Sifu Keith Fanning, the scholar, author, speaker, mentor, business coach, life coach, and president of the USA Hapkido Union, Grandmaster Richard Hackworth, the philosopher, author, language culture, and leadership development teacher, and spokesmodel for the World Martial Arts Congress, Instructor Ma. This show is sponsored by World Martial Arts Media. Calm the world's leader in martial arts education, information, and entertainment. We invite you to like and share this video with your friends and subscribe to this channel so that you never miss an exciting episode. Now let's get on with the show. Hello and welcome to the Tea with the Masters podcast. I'm your co-host, Dicey Fuki Fanning. I'm the Grand Master of Blue Dragon Min Chuan and the host of Ireland's premier martial arts tournament, the International Breaking and Martial Arts Championships held here in the beautiful city of Dublin. Today I want to talk to you about recovery. So let's get started. As I explain to my students and anybody that I mentor, recovery is just as important as the exercise itself. When it comes to recovery, people think about, you know, I'm going to go home, take a protein shake, you sit around. That's not quite recovery. That's just part of it. Part of recovery can be meditation, your hydration, your flexibility, your movement. There's so much that goes into recovery. Through the years of working with different not only martial artists, but bodybuilders. Bodybuilders were actually able to teach me a lot about recovery. Recovery started in your hydration. Um, when it came to hydration, you know, good quality water, not just your tap water, but good quality spring water or bottled water with a pinch of Himalayan salt or another mineral salt. It had to be mineral salt. It couldn't just be table salt. So what they used was a quarter of a teaspoon of mineral salt per liter of water. This helped your muscles absorb the water quicker and more efficiently. In return, this helped you recover from your exercise or your workout or whatever you happen to be doing. They also said that you have a 45 minute slot in which you have to get protein into your system. That's why a lot of them use protein shakes. Now, some people think protein shakes are controversial. I personally used to use them when I was doing a lot of powerlifting. Um, but I found very quickly that the protein I was taking didn't actually suit my system. It was a milk-based protein um, and my body couldn't absorb it correctly. So I switched to a beef-based protein shake and that actually helped my recovery and my gain of muscle mass. So what they also talk about was you once you had that 45 minute slot where you got your protein into you whether it was through drink or food Again, the digestive system can be a bit slower, so sometimes the protein shake or supplement was quicker than the actual food source protein. But most bodybuilders, especially competitive bodybuilders, once they had taken that 45 minute slot, they would then go home and they would snooze for 45 minutes because your body actually heals itself while you sleep. So very scientific and you can learn a lot from good bodybuilders. And I found that through the years that I've been studying different ways to heal the body, different ways to break the body down, that you know, you got to listen to all points of view and take what you can from everybody. As my masters would say, every day is a school day. So through the hydration that they would use with the mineral salt, the protein shake or supplement that they were taking, they also mixed in amino acids. Amino acids help the muscles recover too. So... You had all these things that would help you recover. Now, we go a step further. We go to the internal system and you got to break it down. Um, one of my favorite podcast guys at the moment is a guy called Gary Brecker. He's a human, what's he, biologist, human biologist, yeah. And they used to work in the mortality field. So they got to see what killed people and what helped people. In a lot of his stuff, he talks about breath work. Now, breath work is something I specialize in. I've had a, a big background in Qigong. Um, so breath work to me, as soon as he mentioned it, really, really interested me. Because my masters always said, 
where blood flows, she follows. So when you're breathing correctly and with intent, you're actually healing your body and bringing oxygen to every cell in your body. Now, some people, when they start breath work, get very dizzy because then the body doesn't know what to do with the extra oxygen. So you got to start slow. You know, there's guys out there now, the likes of Wim Hof, there's Gary Brecker, as I mentioned before. There's other guys out there, but I think these guys have kind of hit the peak at the moment because of their social media following. They're only telling you stuff that the Chinese and other Asian arts have been talking about for centuries. In, and it's time proven when you look at the Qigong and Tai Chi that goes on every day all around the world. So in recovery, when I'm helping people recover from whether it be a training session with me or the recovering from injury or recovering from even operations, procedures. Breath work is a huge key. So now we're going to mix our breath work and our hydration because the hydration, the water getting carried to the muscles and the cells via the, the salt and the mineral salt, plus the breath work bringing the chi all around your body, you're on a win. So these are some of the things that keep in mind people or folks because when you just think that, you know, my food source is enough to get me through and help me recover from a really heavy training session, it's not. It will help, but it's a slower process. Where if you look at some of the older forms of the Asian arts, but I'm going to talk to my Kung Fu and, and my students, we would do a heavy stretching session, we would do a heavy kicking session, a heavy breaking session, whatever happened to be. But we would finish our training session with relaxed breathing, Qigong style, and some very easy um, stretches. So what we were trying to do was emphasize, it's almost like a yoga style where you were trying to breathe into the stretch and trying to push that oxygen as far as you could into the system. Recovery is a key element to everything because I found, with my background anyway, because we trained so much, and we were talking seven days a week, we trained always. And still to this day, I will train regularly. Don't always hit the seven days, but generally I'll hit six. So when you look at that, to be able to train consistently day after day, condition day after day, stretch condition, everything, you need to recover. And we don't put enough focus on, into our recovery. We focus on how hard we train today, you know, we pushed our limits, great. But now we need to recover. This is just part of the insight that I have into recovery. Obviously, it goes much deeper, but I'm trying to keep it close and keep it short for the podcast. When it comes to this stuff, feel free. If anybody has any questions, please reach out to me. You can get me in a multiple ranges. You can get me through Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, um, X. And you can also email me, seafoodfanning at gmail.com. I hope to hear from some of you. I love when I get questions. And I love when we get to talk about a really good topic, especially something like this. Take care and have a great day. Martial Arts Lifestyle 365, the world's leading martial arts resource. If you practice Taekwondo, Tongsudo, Hapkido, Yudo, or any other Korean martial art, you will find the top experts in the world in our community at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Korean martial arts. We invite you to join today. Hello, I am Richard Hackworth. I am the USA Director for the Korean Martial Arts Instructors Association and the USA Director for the World Martial Arts Congress. I am also the host of the annual Hapkido Instructors Course and Conference in the USA, sanctioned by the USA Hapkido Union and the Korean Martial Arts Instructors Association. Over the years, I have earned the reputation of being a scholar of the history, culture, and traditions of the Korean martial arts. I hope that you will find my part of the show informative and educational. This part of the show is sponsored by usahapkidunian.org, Preparedness in the Martial Arts by Richard Hackworth. On the topic of preparedness, I have some very powerful thoughts. Most of the bad things that ever happened to us are the result of our lack of preparedness. 
So I want to share with you a few ways that I prepare for the unexpected. The first thing that I do to prepare for the unexpected, especially when it comes to self-defense situations, is that I train my attributes. Your attributes are the things that make your techniques work under pressure. Things like speed, flexibility, and balance. No technique will help you if your reaction time, your movement speed, and flexibility are limited. Developing your movement speed takes time and conditioning, but improving your reaction speed can be done quickly. To improve my reaction speed, I look at a clock and every time the second hand ticks, I will react with a block or a strike. Another reaction drill that I do is a partner drill where they call out a move while swinging the pad that I must strike or block. They do this using a broken rhythm so that it is not just practicing timing, but practicing the response. To improve my speed and balance, I stretch every day to maintain my flexibility. Tight muscles do not respond quickly, so it is important to maintain and improve your flexibility if necessary so that you move faster through a full range of motion. Practice both seated and standing stretches, including stretches for your arms and back. These exercises will serve you well with improved mobility throughout the rest of your life. I believe the major key to good balance is to have strong ankles. There are countless balance drills such as kicking while balancing on one foot. For safety reasons, I recommend holding on to something like a chair or touching the wall for stability until you can safely do the exercises with good form and posture. Then start using only one hand on the wall or chair to maintain balance until you have the strength and balance to do the exercise unassisted. At this point, you can do the exercises without holding on to anything at all. I like doing squats with my feet together for balance. As you get better, you can do them with your eyes closed for an increased level of proficiency. On the topic of strength training for preparedness, I think that your fight primary goal should be learning how to use energy to generate power. Because if you are only using strength to develop power, you'll wear out very quickly in a stressful emergency self-defense situation. I like to illustrate this by comparing our martial arts techniques to driving a nail. You don't hold the nail up straight and then set the hammer head on top and then use both hands on the hammer head to try to shove the nail through the board using strength. You swing the hammer handle, allowing the weight of the hammer head in motion to create the power when it strikes the nail on the head to drive it through the board. We do this with our techniques by using the principle of enhanced mass where we use our body weight in motion to create the power of the strike instead of just the extension of our arm, relying on the arm to being strong enough to cause damage. Functional strength can be easily improved through body weight exercise, such as squats and push-ups. Using your body weight also helps you develop muscular endurance that helps you avoid fatigue. There is an old saying that fatigue makes cowards of us all. An often overlooked aspect of being prepared is how you dress. For example, be sure to wear no slip shoes with good soles. This keeps you from sliding and slipping or falling while struggling with an attacker. Make sure that your clothing doesn't have a lot of straps or loops that can easily become handles for an attacker to hold on to while he gains an advantage by off-balancing you. A necklace with a leather cord might look cool until someone is using it to choke you. Be sure to tuck your shirt into your pants so that it cannot be easily pulled over your head to limit your visibility during an attack. Make sure that your belt is the proper length and not too long so that it doesn't stick out from your belt loops becoming an easy handle for others to grab and hold on to. Do not wear a hat with a chin strap. I would rather lose my hat in a strong wind than have someone grab it from behind and use it to choke me unconscious. My last tips is the easiest to do. Drink plenty of water. You will have more energy and less chance of cramping during a fight if you are properly hydrated. I want to personally thank you for supporting today's show. I invite you to join the Korean Martial Arts Instructors Association today. Share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below. Remember, the journey to the heart of Hapkido begins with a single step. Get started today. Don't go away. We will be right back after a word from our sponsors.
Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, it is time for you, yes you, to follow the world's leading martial arts profile at instagram.com forward slash WMA Media Official, where you can get the most motivational, inspirational, and educational advice from the world's leading martial arts organizations all in one place. Hello, I am Instructor Ma. I am the World Martial Arts Congress Language, Culture, and Character Development Teacher. This portion of the show is sponsored by WorldMartialArtsCongress.cn. While you are here, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Hit the like button and share this video with a friend. It helps more than you know. Now on with the show. Today's topic is how practicing Tai Chi can bring balance to your life. Tai Chi is a mind-body practice that originated in China centuries ago. It is a gentle, flowing exercise that combines slow, graceful movements with deep breathing and meditation. Tai Chi is often described as meditation in motion because it can help bring balance to your physical, mental, and emotional health. How Tai Chi Improves Your Physical Health Tai Chi can help to improve your physical health in a number of ways. It can help to improve your balance. Tai Chi requires you to maintain your balance throughout the movements, which can help to improve your balance and coordination. Increase your flexibility. The slow flowing movements of Tai Chi can help to improve your flexibility and range of motion. Strengthen your muscles. Tai Chi can help to strengthen your muscles, especially your core muscles. Reduce your risk of falls. Tai Chi can help to reduce your risk of falls by improving your balance, flexibility, and muscle strength. Improve your cardiovascular health. Tai Chi can help to improve your cardiovascular health by increasing your heart rate and blood flow. Lower your blood pressure. Tai Chi can help to lower your blood pressure by reducing stress and improving your cardiovascular health. Reduce your stress levels. Tai Chi can help to reduce your stress levels by promoting relaxation and reducing muscle tension. Improve your sleep quality. Tai Chi can help to improve your sleep quality by promoting relaxation and reducing stress levels. How Tai Chi Improves Your Mental Health Tai Chi can also help to improve your mental health in a number of ways. It can help to reduce stress. Tai Chi can help to reduce stress by promoting relaxation and reducing muscle tension. Improve your mood. Tai Chi can help to improve your mood by promoting relaxation and reducing stress levels. Increase your self-confidence. Tai Chi can help to increase your self-confidence by helping you to learn new skills and overcome challenges. Improve your focus and concentration. Tai Chi can help to improve your focus and concentration by requiring you to focus on the present moment and your body's movements. Increase your creativity. Tai Chi can help to increase your creativity by helping you to relax and let go of your inhibitions. How Tai Chi improves your emotional health. Tai Chi can also help to improve your emotional health in a number of ways. It can help to reduce anxiety, Tai Chi can help to reduce anxiety by promoting relaxation and reducing stress levels. Improve your sleep quality. Tai Chi can help to improve your sleep quality by promoting relaxation and reducing stress levels. Increase your overall well-being. Tai Chi can help to increase your overall well-being by improving your physical, mental, and emotional health. I am sure that you can see now how Tai Chi brings balance into our lives so you may be wondering, how do I start practicing Tai Chi? If you are interested in starting to practice Tai Chi, there are a few things you should keep in mind. First, it is important to find a qualified instructor. Tai Chi is a complex practice, and it is important to learn the movements correctly to avoid injury. Second, you should start slowly and gradually increase the intensity and duration of your workouts as you get stronger and more comfortable with the movements. Finally, be patient. It takes time to see the benefits of Tai Chi, so don't get discouraged if you don't see results immediately. Tai Chi is a great way to bring balance to your physical, mental, and emotional health. It is a gentle, flowing exercise that can be practiced by people of all ages and fitness levels. If you are looking for a way to improve your balance, reduce stress, improve your mood, and increase your overall well-being, then Tai Chi is a great option for you. Here are some additional tips for getting started with Tai Chi. Find a qualified instructor who can teach you the movements correctly. 
Start slowly and gradually increase the intensity and duration of your workouts as you get stronger and more comfortable with the movements. Be patient. It takes time to see the benefits of Tai Chi, so don't get discouraged if you don't see results immediately. Find a Tai Chi class or group that meets regularly so that you can stay motivated and make progress. Make Tai Chi a part of your regular routine. The more you practice, the more benefits you will experience. For more information on joining the World Martial Arts Congress or getting our character development program for your school, please visit our page at www.facebook.com slash World Martial Arts Congress. If you got something from this video, and I certainly hope that you did, it would mean a lot to me if you liked and commented on this video. Thank you for watching. You have been enjoying the Tea with the Masters podcast, the world's foremost martial arts lifestyle podcast. On behalf of our show hosts, we thank you for watching and remind you to visit our sponsor, WorldMartialArtsMedia.com, the world's leader in martial arts education, information, and entertainment. We look forward to having you join us again next time. We love to hear from you, so please feel free to leave us some words of encouragement in the comments section.